Don't even ask, guys. I figured it out. <sighs> Kill me, Smalls, slowly. Can you hear me now? Are we good? Hi, Brad. Hi, Irvin. Hey, Tony. Hey, Matt. Mr. Housen, how you doing? Hey, Tristan. Oh, gosh. This thing is going to kill me. I'm just saying. I've been messing with this thing for about 45 minutes now. Now I'm tired. Can we do this another time? <laughs> Hang on, let me hear me loud and clear. That's cool. Uh, where is. Uh, we'll pour that later. Let's squeeze in through here. <sighs> this has been. A, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Let's do this. Do this. Where I'm supposed to be. Here we go. Boom. Hey, look, there's people watching. Imagine that. All you have to do is turn off the going. Let me turn this off. All you have to do is turn off pub or uh, private to like public, and then you get video. I couldn't figure that out. Uh, Facebook has moved everything around everywhere. Talk with my hands. So. Oh, let's see here. I want to see what's coming through. And I want to... Come through on. There we go. What's up, Troy? Let's see, we got Mr. Fly Hawaiian, Tristan, Raymond. Tyrone, Teddy, Matthew Housen, Tim Smith. Tim Smith is in the house. Brad. I know this guy named Brad. Uh, Brad Geck. Jeremy. Edgar. What's, what's up, Crazy Crawlers? Uh, we got John, Tim, uh, Dustin, Victor, another Tim. That's Tim Tyler. Tim Olson. Oh, Tim's in there. Timothy. Uh, Scott. What's up, Dustin? What's up, Tyler? Hey, we're gonna, I got a lot to cover today and I hopefully this doesn't run too long, but it's going to. Um, I have it kind of pointed down because this is my main focus is here. Actually, for you guys, what's up, Nick? How's Florida? Gary? Wow, we got a good following right now. I hope all you guys Friday is uh hope all you guys are doing well. Hope you're not sitting in traffic. Um there's a way of doing this. Comments. Huh. There we go. That's gonna make it sideways though. Hey, that'll work. What's up, guys? Thanks for the thumbs up. What's up, Matt? Uh, hey, Jonathan Schultz. What's up, John? Gary? All right. Hopefully, most of you guys have uh, received uh, your Enduro that you've ordered. And uh, I've been watching a lot of videos. A lot of videos. Like, almost every one that comes out. Every live feed. And uh, there's got to be some questions out there. So I am going to try to answer as many questions as possible throughout this, this uh, live feed here. What's up, Sean? Uh, what's, up, Sean? what's up, Ryan? Tony? Antonio? Daniel? What's up, Brandon Caton? Uh, Dennis? Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I'm sorry I'm late. It was a... Uh, Catastrophe on this Facebook Messenger live feed thing. 
whenever it reloaded, it made everything private. So I'm sitting here trying to do a live feed. I've already done this like start once and uh, actually it started like this. Nick, you're gonna like this. It started with this thing going. I'm very easily entertained. These are things that are seven dollars on uh, on Amazon. This isn't a uh, commercial, and I hooked up a Dean's so I can run a seven four battery, so I have a lot of longevity and not uh, kill a nine volt in five minutes. What's up, Jay? Uh, nice, 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 nice. Um. I'm just going to kind of start. I've got a lot of notes that I've been taking throughout this uh, uh, last few, uh, last week or so. And I uh, just want to go over a few things. If everybody doesn't, under, doesn't know yet, I work for Associated Electronics. One of our brands is Element RC, which is our lifestyle brand. Um, and we have Team Associated, we have Reedy, and we have Factory Team. So this is our lifestyle brand. The number one question is, why, how come you didn't put this under the, underneath the Team Associated name? Well, because when I say Team Associated with people now or people from the past, the first thing they say is, um, oh yeah, I had an RC-10. Oh yeah, I used to race, or I race, and we didn't want this to get lost in the race uh, scene. This is, it's all new lifestyle brand and we're really excited. I know I'm really excited. <clears throat> what's up, Jake? Uh, Michael, BK, what's up? James, what's up, Thad? Thad Gardner works for us now, if nobody knows. Um, please move, please move from, uh, please move from your lap. Oh, got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So uh, I'm gonna, you know me, I'm scatterbrained. So basically what I wanna do is just kinda go over some key features of this truck. Uh, this is a 10 scale uh, trail truck. Um, it's a 213, or 2.3 wheelbase. That's uh, uh, 313 millimeters. Um, it's got one nine, uh, size wheels, uh, 4.65 tires. Um, they're a really nice sticky compound. Uh, we've really been uh, playing with them a lot. Hey, Mr. Jimmy, Jimmy, aren't you supposed to be doing a race right now? <clears throat> um, comes with a two-piece slack sound body, comes with the folding mirrors, comes with the windshield wipers, um, comes with LED lights, uh, it comes in this color, but also, when we released the truck, all the aftermarket parts, the clear bodies, the hard plastics, our uh, rebuildable motors, uh, black wheels, uh, extra tires, um, links, all that stuff's already available online. You can go on to your team associated, get your part numbers, go to your local hobby shop, and purchase, purchase all that stuff. Um, and most hobby shops will hopefully already be carrying this stuff. Um, what's up, Andy? Uh, Jeremy? What's up, Kevin? Zach? So, um, I'm just gonna get right into it and uh, I'll come back and try to answer a lot as many questions as possible. Yeah, um, tell me if the, the, the volume changes. Is, is that okay, can you guys still hear me? Because I was trying to use that mic to go off my phone. Uh, what's up, Kyle? So, the body is a two-piece body. It comes with LED, LED, LED lights. Clear windows, um, yes, uh, the body is a little thin. Um, I like this, th this thinner body because it's just less weight for me. If you guys want to do, if you guys want to stiffen this up, uh, a lot of guys will use uh, uh, that draw, drywall tape and they'll drywall tape the sides and you should go over the top of that and it really stiffens up the body a lot. Uh, one thing I did notice that helps out a lot is I drilled a hole on the outside of the bodies out here and bolted it here and here, and it really stiffened up the body a lot. So you guys have bodies that kind of flex a little bit, uh, put a bolt on the outside, that will help out a lot. It'll give a, give a lot more rigid, rigidity. Uh, 
So let's see. Yeah, a lot, all of our upgrades uh, are going to be moving into uh, being uh, available as per the release of the truck. You can get hard plastics, you can get upgraded, a little bit of shock tops, shock bottoms, springs, um, rebuildable motor, uh, all the batteries, they're all in stock now. Uh, clear bodies are in stock. Uh, we have inner fenders that are in stock. All that stuff's in stock. So if your local hobby shop doesn't have it yet, go onto our website, go into the Enduro page, go to the parts, uh, go down the list, find out what you need, go to your local hobby shop and say, hey, I want this, order this, and they'll get it in. What's up, Dave? Hey, one, two, I got a bunch of Daves. Um, so, the, like I said, the body's got a nice uh, hard grill, 3D, you know, uh, uh, molded, molded uh, grill with headlights. It's got a sticker on, on the back side, shows that some, there's some detail in there. Um, doesn't have rear lights, but you can do those, that's not a problem. Um, and the mirrors are pretty cool because they fold in. I run them like this, so I don't break them off. Um, also, for you guys that um, are hard on stuff like I am, if you round these little edges right here, get rid of the sharp edges, uh, they won't crack as, as easy. Um, I'm pretty abusive with my stuff, so. I'm gonna try to keep up with the questions here. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the elephant in the room. I'm just gonna come out and say it. You guys that take this truck, which is a trail truck, and go out to your backyard comp course and comp it, yes, the bumpers are gonna be an issue. We will not make this, this, this uh, problem ever again. Right, Brad? The best thing to do now watch this. I'm going to take care of this problem really quick. Problem solved. No more bumper bashing. Look at all the ground clearance you get. Front and rear. <laughs> I'm just going to come out and say that. It's that simple. Um, there's a lot of aftermarket companies out there. You have Wordy Made. You have Scalar Fab. Um, all these other companies out there that already make bumpers that fit this truck. It's the same with... Uh, the bolt pattern is pretty similar. A lot of the bolt patterns have uh, on these bu aftermarket bumpers have slides, so you can actually bolt uh, other bumpers on. I have a Scalar Fab on that truck. I have a Wordy Made on this truck. I have Wordy Made sliders on that truck. I got Reef sliders on this truck. Um, I'm sure I have, there's bump rear bumpers out there. I haven't uh, searched yet but I'm gonna find some rear bumpers for this also. I'm sure Wordy and Scalar Fab and all these other aftermarket companies will be uh, making bumpers. Um, but yeah, I just took care of all your bumper problems. Four screws, no more bumper problems, guys. So next time we do a live video, just take the bumpers off because all you guys are gonna go out there and run them on your comp courses, which is fine because that's what I do. Let me take these up real quick. When we design these bumpers, we actually designed them after a real truck. So on paper, it really looked really good. And then when we got them and saw them in person, we got bumpers. Sweet, John, see John's got one on, uh, Dustin's, yeah, Dustin, if you uh, have a rear bumper on your truck, or if you guys have rear bumpers, let me know which brand you guys are going with so I can share with everybody else. Or tag me them, that way we can all enjoy them. Uh, we have uh, Element RC here, and we have Element RC in UK. There's two different pages. Uh, so go in there and check those guys out. Um, what's up, Carlos? So we already talked about the body. Now the chassis itself, what we've done here, we have put a lot of research in this thing. Um, there's uh, four main players with, with Element right now that we all have been working together. And it's uh, Aaron Lane, which is uh, our designer, Brad Geck, which is head of marketing, myself, uh, which I'm brand ambassador. Um, so you, I mean, you guys will see me in hobby shops and at events and that kind of stuff, as well as you'll see Aaron and you'll see, you know, Brad, and we're all gonna go to these different events. 
Um, and then you have Dave. Dave is our, our, our graphics guy. And there's all kinds of other people involved. You know, we have our reading department. We have, you know, other parts of graphics like Eric and uh, customer service is going to be a part of this too. Um, so this, this has been a group effort and we have really done some testing and redesigning and developing to make this truck the, the truck that everybody's been asking for. Um, we did uh, do a, the frame rails are a high, higher frame rail so you get a lot better clearance, uh, no hitting. So if you guys want to actually run a droop truck, you get a lot better clearance. Um, now the servo is not in this because I took the servo out. Uh, I was going to put a different servo in this but I haven't, I haven't done that yet. It's been a little busy fighting with Facebook. Um, so it's got the high clearance frame rails. It's their C channel. Um, the post front and rear for your bumper mounts are the same as other brands. So you can use other brands bumpers if you would like. Uh, the bolt pattern width is the same as other brands so you can use um, uh, other people's bumpers too. And the reason why we did that is because it's so hard for hobby shops to carry different stuff for different trucks all the time. It, 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 it creates a lot of single item parts on the wall of hobby shops when they can use one part to fit multiple trucks. So we're trying to help you guys out as well as hobby shops because you might already have a truck that you want to change everything over to and that stuff will bolt right on, no problem. Um, but yeah, that, that's our frame. Uh, all of our links are steel, nickel plated steel links. Um, you're not gonna break these. Uh, we have our uh, gray rod ends, front and rear, uh, just like, all this plastic is the same plastic you'll see on our, our, our race cars, our V6, our V74. It's all high quality plastic. Um, the rod ends, the balls, the, the balls themselves are a harder plastic than actually the, um, the, the cup itself, so they don't, they don't wear out that quick. Um, we also do sell optional steel balls if you guys want to run steel balls on them too. I run steel balls on mine, I just feel they're a little bit smoother. Um, cut the frame, somebody already cut the frame. It actually looked pretty good because they put a uh, uh, Proline uh, back half on it. So uh, these are all uh, really, really, really strong links. I took uh, these links and went out to the vise and a 10 pound sludge hammer to try to bend one. No, I broke it, and I hit it pretty hard. You won't bend. You won't bend these unless you run them over the car, and I still don't think it's going to bend. <laughs> um, it comes with a high clearance rear axle, uh, so you got all your high clearance. Uh, your your uh, rig and pinion is reversible. Uh, the reason why we did that because there's a lot of guys out there that have motors that they're like, why is my truck always fast and reverse that is in forward? And the, uh, the reason why is because a lot of motors out there have some kind of timing in their motor. So it's always going to be faster forward in the reverse, but when you put them in trail trucks, you don't really know which way you're either going. So you can, if it's faster in reverse, you can actually um, reverse the, uh, your, uh, your, ring, your, your ring gear onto the other side and reverse your motor, and now your, your truck will be faster in forward than reverse. So you get the proper performance. Um, yes, Dustin, still balls. We make them and we use them on our rod ends. They're great. Um, Edgar uses a bore front bumper from Warney Made. So that's what's on his. I think he's got, if you go to Crazy Crawlers, he's got pictures of that bumper on his page. I think Warney's got pictures on that page. Um, the bumper I have on that truck, uh, that is uh, Scalar Fab. Uh, they ha I have it, pictures on my uh, Facebook page as well as uh, Scalar Fab's got pictures on, on their, their page too. Um, if anybody uh, knows our rear bumper, let me know. Um, Dustin's saying he's got a JK rear bumper from Scalar Fab on the back of his. Send pictures out if you can so we can check it out. Uh, any other bodies uh, yet, uh, Carlos? Um, not yet, but they're coming. Um, with the bodies, we use the same body uh, post size as other brands. That way you can use different posts. This truck actually comes with a tall, taller post in the box, as well as it comes with two battery trays. It comes with the narrow one 
for your shorty packs and it comes with a wide one for your wider packs so uh, and we also sell two cell three cell two cell three cell of these um, so you, you, you there's all kinds of different options you guys can do uh, Nate says he's got a Matt Zilla rear bumper. I don't think I've seen that. We'll have to check that out. Matthew Housen, what's up? Canucks. Got some Canadians out there, huh? So anyways, back to the truck. Um, so uh, with the axles and the rear, we got the high clearance rear. In the front, you can do the same with the front. Now the front, we did spline outside. We did spline the splines as the same as other vehicles because a lot of aftermarket manufacturers that have aluminum or brass C hubs and they still want to keep those. So you can actually put those on there. Um, we have behind the steering, behind the axle steering. So you have nothing in the front besides your, uh, your two links, um, which gives you true 45 degrees of steering. Look at that. Now, if you drive our truck, you're going to notice that it steers that much and it steers that much there it doesn't steer halfway or almost do it or or do this um, if you're crawling slow and you turn the wheel it stays just like that uh, we've, we've done a lot of work inside uh, the front end of, the, of this truck um, your kingpins in the front are eight degrees so you have eight degree caster in the front uh, the truck comes out of the box with zero degree zero degree caster so it's straight up and down. If you want to degree it back one click, it's eight degrees every click you go, forward or reverse. So you guys remember that. Every time you click it one forward or back, it's eight degrees. Um, you might have to do some adjustments with your links, facing up or facing it down, but uh, you can adjust your caster, no problem. Um, what, what oil are we using? Um, the way the oil inside the truck is 300 uh, CF or whatever it is, I call it 20 weight. Basically, this is 20 weight oil um, with uh, 10 mil uh, uh, pistons inside. Um, these shocks are super buttery smooth. They hold oil. They have dampening. Uh, good quality shock. It's the same shocks we used to use on our race trucks back in the day. So. There's really no development to, with this because all my old trucks I've been driving for the last two and a half years all have these shocks. I've been running associated shocks on my trucks forever. Um, it's got good dampening. Uh, the springs we, uh, comes with, uh, let's see, the spring rate comes with uh, grays, which are 1.49 all the way around. We also have green, white, blue, and yellow. Uh, so you can go two degrees softer on springs or you can go two degrees stiffer on springs. So you guys that want to run uh, a low slung trunk that's light, you can actually lighten up your springs. I run white springs on my tr on this truck here because uh, I, I, I want the droop. My truck's got a lot of droop uh, just for side hill and climbing, just the way I prefer my truck. Some people run a real heavy truck and they want to put a little more spring in it. We also have blue and yellow. Gray is stock at 1.49, uh, blue is 209, and yellow is 2.47. If you need anything stiffer than that, you can actually go to our catalog and look at some of our array springs. Because um, we got all kinds of different uh, stiffer springs there too. I'm going to go kind of go over the whole truck. And then I want to get some nitty gritty stuff that people are going to be asking you later on. Uh, Brandon Catan says he's running blue. He must have a heavy truck. He's running blue and yellow. So he's got 209s and 247s. Uh, what's up, Jimmy Lewis? What's the reason behind the axle steering? Uh, the reason why we got rid of the bar in the front because when you're crawling, you want as much you want to get rid of as much area in the front of the truck to give it as much approach angle as possible. So by getting rid of this front bar. I'm, I mean, if that bar went straight across, I'm moving, I'm getting rid of a good half inch of overhang in the front. And also we're getting the proper Ackerman out of the rear because it's pulling it this side farther in, just like it's pulling this side farther in. It's giving the correct Ackerman for better steering. So, and it looks cool. 
It took me a while getting used to it because I'm crawling. I'm like, something's missing the front of my truck. <laughs> it's the bar. It's in the back. So um, for you guys that don't know, I've been driving parts of this truck for about eight months now and been driving the complete truck for seven, six or seven months. And I've been abusing the heck out of it. Truck's been a great truck. Um, yeah, Jim Lewis says softer springs will help in videos because it'll articulate more. Our truck's got really good articulation, especially with, with the springs. And you'll notice how smooth our truck is from side to side. Uh, watch videos of our trucks. When they're climbing, usually all four tires are sticking on the ground. Some trucks, you'll see them climbing up something, and it carries that front wheel over everything. Um, the axle, the gearing in the axle is um, 3.75 uh, to 1. So it's a really good low gearing. Um, the gearbox itself is, uh, the trans, is uh, 2.61. And then if you run the, if you include the spur and pinion, it's 12.61. And you put all that together, it's 47.25 to one is the, your gear ratio from the motor to the, to, to the tires. That's pretty good. Um, what's up, Matt Wolf? How's Vegas? I'm sure it's hot. Of Josh Mitchell, so um, that's our that's our reasoning behind the behind the steering uh, uh, behind the axle steering. Just gives you a lot of cleaner approach angle, a lot cleaner lines, um, and also for this is stuff that I'm going to give you guys some kind of information that's not out there yet. Uh, we also put a uh, if you look on the bottom here, the the link bolts right here. Um, you can actually put this upper link on either side. So if you want to follow on the, the, the side of the, of the axle, you can do that. Or you can put it on this side. We also put another hole in the front here. So if you guys want to mess around with shorter upper links, that changes the way the axle reacts. You can actually do that too. That's just stuff that we've added to the truck without letting, telling other people. Uh, people will get it sooner or later. But um, that's just kind of some of the adjustments that we put in the truck. Uh, also, talking about adjustments, um, we also put the bolt pattern for the gearbox on both sides. That way, if you guys wanted to swap, we put motor forward like everybody asked for. But if you don't want to run motor forward, you want to run motor back, you can actually just flip the gearbox around just by undoing four bolts, flipping it around, and bolting it to the other side without taking the whole truck apart. Um, also, if you do that with our gearbox, you will have to buy a, uh, an additional upper gear to move the gear over the upper gear over so you have the uh, overdrive in the front again because if you flip it around like this your overdrive will be underdrive your rear will be overdrive will, which will mess your driving up um wheelbase yes uh 313 uh millimeters uh 12.3 yes so also the, another reason why we share the same bolt pattern uh is because uh, there's a lot of guys out there that have spent a lot of money on, say, Vanquish digs or bomb-proof gearboxes or have aluminum housings that they don't want to get rid of because, you know, they, they have a lot of money in them and don't want to get rid of them. Uh, so we made the bolt pattern where you can actually bolt that, uh, those gears, gearboxes right in without having to change anything. We're, we're, it's another reason we are trying to help the hobby shop sell aftermarket parts in their hobby shop without carrying more aftermarket parts, if that makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, Tony, we have put a lot of thought in this truck. Um, with the kit, uh, the kits are, we, we've already announced the kit. The kit will be out next month. Uh, the kit will actually come with all three different lengths uh, for the rear. So you do your 12.3, your 12, and your 11.6, something like that. I never run that short one, so I don't know what it is. So that will come in the kit, as well as uh, the, the RTR comes with bottom plastic gears, uh, metal gears for idle gears, and uh, a metal top gear. And uh, uh, the kit will come with all machine gears all the way through the truck with the overdrives, the six... Uh, it's actually, um, I'll give you exact numbers here. I call it 6%, but it's actually 5.7% uh, with how it comes out of the box. 
and you can go 11.83% with the aftermarket gears or with the other gears that are in the box with the truck. That makes sense. Uh, Lewis, I don't know. Is it, is it the same bolt pattern? What's up, James Ferguson? So, anyways, um, I'm going to take this gearbox. This is a brand new truck. Um, I'm going to take the gearbox out of this during this video, or this live feed, and we're going to go into it. I'm going to show you guys how to properly gear the truck. Um, but we'll get to that as, as we go. Um... Like I said, it comes with two battery pack or two ba two battery boxes in the box. It comes with uh, your hundred one uh, one hundred and seventy three ounce servo. Uh, it also has a, a space for another servo for a servo winch right here. Um, you can uh, uh, it comes with a five pull a five slot sixteen turn motor, and I've been running these motors for a long time, and I've been a big fan of these motors. Uh, super smooth, great performance. Um, they say they have less torque. I, I don't notice that. I think the motor is very controllable, lots of power, uh, runs cool. Um, the five slot motor has always been really good um, out of the box. Um, we also, uh, we, this is the, the, where's it at? This is our closed inbell 16 slot, uh, our 16 pull five slot motor. It's closed in belt, it's non-rebuildable. This is what comes in the truck. You can also get our rebuildable motors and we make a, um, a 12 turn five slot motor, which is equivalent like a 27 turn. A lot of guys like to run that little, that, that faster motor, um, but it gives you real smooth. Uh, my cat's attacking stuff, I'm not sure why. Um, gives you a nice smooth bottom end, but it gives you good top end. Um, the 16 turn is like a 30, 35 turn. That's what we come stock in the box. And then we have a 20 turn five slot motor, which is gonna be your, your super scale nerds that want to run something that's real nice and slow and torquey and smooth and not really worried about that, that uh, out of control, you know, high horsepower wheel speed. So what's up, Travis? Uh, what's up, Ron? Just trying to make sure I'm catching all of the questions here. All right, cool, cool. So, um, anyways, um, the, so these, the, so we have these motors in stock already. The, the 12 turn, the 16 turn, and the 20 turn rebuilders are already in stock. So, uh, if you guys, if you guys have never tried one of these motors, give it a try. You'll be sold. Uh, the only thing that uh, we have a lot of guys that, that have ran this truck on 3S uh, and they think it's too fast, um, but uh, they still run cold and they, they want to gear them down. Um, I run the stock gearing on 3S. Uh, they like them better on 2S, which is fine. Um, the one thing I do recommend is when you guys do put these motors in your trucks, uh, just play with the gearing and uh, Check, check your temps on your motor. Your motor should never get hot. Make sure it's not over tightened. Um, and you'll get really good longevity out of the motor. Um, uh, flying Hawaiian. No, this was, this is a, that's my cat. Out of control is normal. Well, let me rephrase that. That's my daughter's cat. <laughs> Whatever. So, anyways, <laughs> back to our. Uh, excuse me, one second here. Bumper, good use. Shoot another room. So, I did hit the cat. It landed by her feet. <laughs> I love that cat. Um, the speedo. It is. Uh, this is a. It's it's our speedo. It's got our programming in it. It's you can put up to three S on it. Uh, two and three S. It comes with um, uh, zero degree, or zero uh, zero drag brake, fifty percent drag brake. Which that's what it comes in the kit. The truck comes with fifty percent drag brake, or hundred percent drag brake. 
So if you guys get the truck and notice that it's not holding, if you want it to hold on a hill, just flip this over to the 100% mark and you'll have 100% drag weight. Uh, I'm not sure why we did 50% out of the box, but uh, it, the 100% the is adjustable just by moving that, the pin over. Um, this is, uh, this also comes with two J connectors. And the reason why we put J connectors on it, I put these and I push them in between the fins. Hang on one second, get this one in there. See how it holds, see how it holds that in there? And then, don't, then they don't come out. So uh, these are J connectors. Proline sells these really cool light bars and all their light bars have these J connectors. So you get, their, you get the Proline light bar and it plugs right into our speed up. It just makes it easier that way. Uh, these are, both these put out the same, which are six volts and uh, at three amps. Uh, ours, have, ours has more amperage than uh, other companies. So it's six volts, three amps output. And you don't have to worry about putting uh, the front and the rear, the rear and the front. I know one's red, one's white, but they put out the same voltage. Uh, what I did is Proline actually makes a, uh, not sure why the dog's pacing. Uh, Proline makes these little two inch uh, light bars. And I actually bolted them inside the frame, one in the battery box and one here, and it gave me rock lights and it's plugged right into the speed up, or right into the speed up. And it, it makes it really super clean. So, and then Vanquish makes really high powered ones. You just hook those right up to your, your T-plug and you get your 11, 11, one voltage to those lights if you need them. Um, yeah, the cat knocked over a chair that fell on the wall and then the dog ran. So yeah, it was kind of big. Uh, another one, another question. Is the kit going to come, or the RTR, is the kit coming with the garage? No. The RTR comes with the garage. The kit comes with the outside of the garage. The, the RTR comes with uh, the back side of the, of the door. You can actually cut the door out, it has an alleyway. So it, it kind of completes your garage inside and out. Um, if you go onto my Instagram page or my, some of my Facebook pages, you'll see my Toyota um, Matrix body from Nines Customs. It's pulled in the garage. Uh, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the kit, the, uh, kit box, the, the, that view. What's up, Paul? What's up, Clint, Chris? So. Okay, so I think we kind of went over everything with this. Uh, so let's get into some detail stuff here. Uh, I'm gonna start taking the truck apart. <sighs> Gotta take off these little, uh, your hubs. Remember guys, scale points, I went to K&K &K <laughs> and Sean Ireland went, which is a vice president and uh, Aaron went and uh, we lift a, a month of scale points. We're like, all right, we need scale points. We need to have this, we need to have that. So hubs, one point, scale points, circle rules. What's up, Paul? What's up, Freddy? All right. Chi Chi. Uh, also, if you notice with our rocker, our sliders, our sliders are fully adjustable in and out. Uh, one thing we did, I'm a, I'm a performance guy. I, I'm all about performance. There's two guys, there's two types of guys basically in trail trucks. There's performance guys that want to do the impossible climbs and the dumb climbs and the dumb wedge rock stuff. And you got the, the dollhouse guys, Brad Gack, um, uh, 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 Matthew Cat, uh, those guys are those guys are all dollhouse people. They want to put chandeliers and they want to put cheeseburgers on the dash, and they want to put you know uh, doilies hanging around uh, uh, the outside. Those are dollhouse people. I'm like you know the Josh Steeds, those guys. I want to do performance. I want to uh, climb crazy stuff. <laughs> 
Hashtag full dollhouse. So. Yes, uh, uh, Jimmy Lewis was asking about Sean Ireland from HBI. Yes, Sean Ireland was my boss. He was president of HBI uh, back when I was with HBI a few years ago. Uh, he And I worked for, for Sean Ireland. He was actually Rodney Wills' boss. So, yeah, same Sean Ireland. He was vice president of, of uh, Associated Electronics. All right. Um... I'm not kidding about cheeseburger. Oh, other, here we go. This is my scale and tear from K&K. I, I went kind of dollhouse. See the cheeseburger and soda on the dash? And then I got my packages. I got soda cans on the ground. Um, I also, I needed a horn. So I, if you look in his hand, uh, that's a rubber ducky. So... Yeah, I kind of went full dollhouse doll on, on this one too. But I don't run this all the time. I just run a, a, like a 2D interior in there because I want to. I'll save this for a Sorka event. What's up, Scott? Yeah, a long time ago, huh, huh uh, Jimmy? So we're all old, right, Jimmy? I'm gonna take the front tires off real quick. Because I've heard more comments from people that say these are glued on wheels. These are not glue on tires. These are beadlocks. And I'm going to prove it. Maybe I'm going to prove it. I'm going to try to prove it. Hang on a second. Jonathan, where's my 1.5? Oh, he can't hear me because he's racing at Bakersfield at Jimmy's race. Let me get up a look. Sixteen. Oh, I bet that little kid got my my tools. Jonathan, you got my 116th? I know you're listening. I have it handled. I got my team associated in multi wrench. This is what I usually carry on trail. That's not it. Better not be this one, one five out here, too. Please stand by. We don't have to stand, you can sit. Ah, there we go. My Reefs 1.5. Yeah, if you don't know that, uh, Reef has uh, tools. They have a little impact stuff with my Makita. With my Makita. Yes, Dustin, I always get jacked by my son. No, I got the I got the drill. I was looking for the bit. Yeah, BC, you want to come over and help me organize my tools? You guys don't have one of these Makitas. They're rad. All right. So I took out all the screws. Look at this. One, two, three. And I got my tire off. They are B locks, guys. B locks. So, um, there you go. There's your answer. B locks. Also, uh, for you guys that um, have SLW hubs from Vanquish or uh, Weights, um, they 
same ball pattern. The only thing you have to do is you have to get uh, 330 seconds hardware to uh, put through here to bolt through to the um, to the SLW hub. So if you guys get these out and you know you want to change the foam real quick, but you know you can do that really quick. Put your dual stage in there, your three stage, your four stage, your five stage, whatever. How many stages you guys use? Uh, on your uh, in your tires yeah I haven't used the Milwaukee I've always been using uh, I always use the, the Nikita's so anyways uh, put the put your wheel back together like that now the cool thing what I do is you know because they're kind of you have to line them up I look for the one that has the hole lined up with uh, the triangle and I'll put that in there and then I'll find the other one that's lined up with the triangle. And I just kind of do that. I'll start a screw. And then I'll put, see the screw will actually go through and kind of hold it together. Not really, but kind of. And just enough so you can line up your, um, My dog. Just enough to kind of get this started. Gonna put another one in there. So another thing I like about these kids is they have a clutch. So you can set them up pretty soft. Um, uh, if you're asking about the, these are all plastic. Yes, these are all plastics. Uh, but we also, if you look on our, our optional parts, we also sell steel. I think I'll learn them. We also sell uh, aftermarket ones. The, no, brass. We have brass uh, 12 mil adapters, and we also have uh, the metal ones. So if you want to change those over, you can do that. Uh, or like I said, if you want to use SLW uh, from Vanquish or any of those style, um, those will bolt right on. You just have to change those screws over to 330 seconds or whatever hex screw is needed. But see, B-locks, no glue. Don't boil these, don't put them in your oven, don't microwave them, don't, Whatever you do to get glue off, because you don't have any glue to get off. Just unscrew them. Oh, the dinner bell? Yeah, that's my dog's tag. Sorry. She usually lays down and does nothing, but she's kind of spooks if the dog or the cat knocked the chair over. What's up, Joe? What's up, Josh? What's up, Vinny? I gotta get I need to get out there, Vinny. We gotta go crawling. I'm Jones and go crawling out there. Vinny, uh, Colorado Springs, right? Oh gosh, the crawling out there is absolutely insane. Love that place. Some of the, if you're ever out there, hit up Vinny out there and tell him you wanna go crawling. He'll take you to some epic places. Absolutely epic. Yeah, Ben, 440. What did I say, 330 seconds? Because of bit's 330 seconds. You're correct, Ben. 440 if you use the SLW. Sorry, my bad. I have a lot of numbers in my head right now. So, there we go. There's some expl explanation on the on your uh, your bead locks, plastic bead locks. Um, we also have these wheels in black. So if you guys want to change them over to black, uh, these these are black. Those have the three thirty second screws, and those have the a little bit wider Vanquish. Um, Hubs, so I do have those. You can see them. In there. You, you can see them in there, but um, I did widen this truck out with those screws. So let's go here. Your elements in the mail. Well, go get it. How big of a mailbox do you have, Joe? If your elements in the mail, that's a pretty big. Uh, that's a pretty big mailbox. I know what you mean. 
This is a brand new truck I'm taking apart for you guys. Now the shocks are oil filled, like I explained. Uh, they have uh, like 20 weight oil on them. 20 weight. 10 millimeter, so you can actually change pistons if you want. Uh, really good uh, performance out of them. Um, now one thing I'm gonna go over real quick, let me pull that one off. Got all these tools everywhere. I bought my son Jonathan. Just put the email. I bought my son Jonathan um, the MIP black tools, the black editions. So we wouldn't get our tool um, mixed up. Let me know how that's going. Uh, the drive shafts, I haven't broke anything on the drive shafts. Uh, I'm going to take, take them apart right, real quick. I want to go over something with these. There's no better way of uh, showing you guys than taking them apart. This is very important, guys. <clears throat> Here's your drive lines right here. It comes with a aluminum center for strength. Your universals here are also all metal. And it has the plastic outers here. Uh, They're super strong. Uh, when you drive your truck, if you drive in a place that's really wet um, and you start to notice the truck is squeaking, What's squeaking is actually these uh, these joints right here. So if you take some some grease, um, they're real easy to take apart. You just uh, slide this off, uh, push the pin out. I'm gonna just vibrate it out real quick. Sure I am. Uh, pull the pin out. There's a barrel right here. Put a little bit of grease on this barrel put it back together and your squeak will go away because I like my trucks to be quiet and if anybody hasn't drove in this uh, driven this truck yet or seen this truck in person this truck is a very quiet truck it, it doesn't sound like a meat grinder or anything it's like it's, it's super quiet because this is race quality because we are AE um, how do you feel about uh, 10 50 whale it you know, you know, honestly, uh, Jimmy, it all really depends on your driving. If you're going to be like a, a dollhouse driver and you're just going to kind of, you want the suspension to work and move realistically, yeah, 10, 15 weight is going to be fine. If you drive it hard like me and jump on it and beat on it, and uh, 20 weight's got a little more dampening. So, oh, who gave me a sad face? Is it a hybrid? <laughs> no. It makes it more sweat, scale and noise. Yeah, Luke, if you want, if you like that. <laughs> um, all right, uh, I'm gonna get back. Uh, this right here, there's a couple different ways this can go together. Um, this, this doesn't just go with our rig, this goes with all rigs. Um, you want this to be, it's just like a real drive shaft. Uh, you have your, your, your uh, where your pin is, you want this pin to be lined up with this pin. If you have it clocked one over, you're gonna get vibration in it, just like a real drive shaft. So you always wanna make sure that these are straight line. So if you see the pin here, you want the pin to show here. Now you can put the screw this way and this way, or this way and this way, but you want these pins to be right in seriously you want the pins to be right in line that's going to get rid of all your vibrations just like a real drive shaft in a real car so this is our manual i know 99.9 percent .9 of you guys have gotten this truck 
haven't even seen this yet because it's still in the bag in the box. <laughs> um, if you go in here and read through the instructions, it'll actually show you properly how to install your drive line, drive lines. So, um, right here it says correct phasing, incorrect phasing. You want the, the step uh, screws to actually be right lined. If they're not in line, you will get vibration. So it, things happen, if you get your truck out of a box and it's brand new and you notice there's a lot of vibration in the truck, check these real quick. It could just be a, a, a two mil, take one side out, realign it, put it back together and you're good to go. You know, um, if you do have a, if, you do, if that's not the problem, that's the only thing the problem is. Um, Yes, you need to support your local hobby shops. Nick Barber, you run 40 to 70 in your shocks. I guarantee you run 40 to 70 in knee shocks, you're not gonna have any suspension because the tol tolerances are in this are race quality. And I know you know our shocks because you have an associated collect collection in your hobby shop that I want. Well, you got a lot of collections in your hobby shop I want. Equipment collection, <laughs> Should I go on? Um, yes, BK. Luke is dollhouse. I saw his brand new uh, element, and he already had it all one five five and full dollhouse out. Any question on proper phasing, guys? If you don't understand it, PM me. I will. I will understand it. I will tell you to go to page 13, no, no, page 12 in your Enduro manual. And if I can't help you and the book can't help you, then go to the back of the book and call 949-544-7500. Uh, ask for Don, and that's customer service. So, remember guys, if you do have a question, usually Facebook can't help you, but 949-544-7500 customer service can, a lot quicker. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here, what's up Michael? Hello from the UK, what's up Alan? What's your weather like? We're getting into summer. What's up, Bobby? Make sure I got, I'm getting all your questions here. All right, so we talked about phasing. That's one thing I wanted to talk about. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that out. Um, pro tip. Pro tip, this is what I do. On the rear only. Shh, don't tell anybody, it's top secret. See where the bolt it goes into your upper mouth on your rear, rear arm? I take a longer screw and I'll shave this off with my Dremel tool and I'll mount this to this screw that goes through this bar or your, your bottom link, which lowers the back and gives you better lower performance. Shh, don't tell anybody I told you that. But that's what I do. Uh, a few toys. Uh, yeah, those are race cars. Let's see here. You haven't tried the 12% overdrive yet? Game changer. You'll notice with this truck, with the overdrive, when you steer, that, that, that true 45, true 45 degrees of steering with the overdrive, it actually will steer better than any truck out there. And you guys that run overdrive know what I'm talking about. Um, Scott, you're asking about the caps. Uh, if you go on to the Enduro page, go into parts and uh, parts and accessories, we actually do have black and blue 
tops, middle, and bottom. We saw as a set. They come in two, so you'll need two for front and rear. So yes, those are already available. As well as we have the silver shocks, and we also have the Kashima coated shocks also on the Element page. So if you don't know what the Kashima is, just go check it out on our on our uh, website. A lot of our race, a lot of our race cars. I switch over to the Kashima. It's a Fox uh, shock thing. What's up, Bobby? Hmm. So, all right, cool. So that's the rear. Let's go to the front. Same, same phase in the front. You want to make sure that the phase in is correct. Um, we talked about the speedo. We talked about now the receiver, the receiver box. It looks like this is all one piece. It is not uh, one piece. It is actually two pieces. This box can actually be unbolted and placed over on this side if you want. Or you could buy another one of these boxes and run two. So if you run, say, such as a, like a, a Tekken FXR that's super small, and you want to put it in one of these waterproof boxes, excuse me, water resistant boxes, you can actually bolt this on this side also. That way you have two boxes hiding all your wires and all your electronics. Um, Mark, I already went over that. Gosh, coming in late. Um, the the uh, diff gear pinion crown ratio is, it's helical cut, it's helical cut, and it's 3.75 to one on the axles. 3.75 to 1. And the reason why we went with the helicut, helical cut is because we found that it has more teeth engagement. There's more teeth actually biting. There's, you know, it's only, it's not a little bit of teeth. It's a lot of, a lot of teeth all the way across. That is, uh, look at this. Look how smooth that is. On the box. Insane. It hasn't even broken yet. Mr. Dan Davis. You have anything new and exciting for these trucks coming out? Huh? 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 I'm running your 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 patties in here. So, all right, let's go. So this box is on either side. Now, what I've done with that truck, I have run the bigger battery box up here in front. I put the speedo on this side of the battery box and run my shorty. On that side, so I got speedo and battery all up here in front. So that's a kind of a cool little trick, also. Yeah, Nick, it's just it's just stronger. The A scale guys, all A scale cars are that way. It, it's just you know, it's all about now. This this truck has okay. This truck has no slipper in it. You don't need a slipper. Uh, people are like, well, I don't want to break it. I've tried. I'm gonna start throwing some videos up that I have done in the past of testing this truck. There's this rock section at Horseman's Park, and you guys that have been there know it's it's probably about this wide, not quite as wide as your truck. And I wedge it through this thing, just all the way through, back and forth, trying to break the drivetrain. I ran this drivetrain six months with the plastic gears in it with no failure, none. Actually, absolutely, Jimmy. Make sure you share it. You're gonna print some stuff out. What's up, Sean? All right. This is a biggie right here. When you take these four screws out, you need to remember which ones go where. The long ones. Go towards the center of the truck. The short ones go on the outside of the truck. Think this way. Thick, because it's thicker in the middle. Thin. That will be in your brain. Thick screw, thin screw. That way you won't have an issue. And I'll go through it here in a second.
All right, guys. Gearbox. There's no slipper in this truck. Nice and smooth. This is a solid like meat grinder. Super quiet, both ways. That was with the motor hooked up. Five slot, 16 turn motor. Let's see if it's up. Hemi Storm in the house. What's up, Hemi? Jeff Gas. You in Bakersfield, Jeff? Diff cover. I recommend diff covers. Diff covers. I don't know why I call it diff cover. Dust cover is really what it is. Especially for you trail truck guys. No. Oh, hashtag sad face. Um. It keeps all the debris off your gears. Um, these gears have a hex, just like our race buggies do. And you can also get these plastic ones in metal. They're already on the website. <clears throat> you have now, you guys that are going to change your overdrive, I need you guys to pay attention really close. Because there was a, uh, somebody did a YouTube video and showed everybody how to uh, put overdrive in the rear of the trucks. <coughs> Not going to say whose name that was. Uh, the gears on this truck are all 48 pitch. And the uh, six months of me driving, Actually, this truck here, this is my original truck. Um, it's all been on 3S and brushless power. No slipper, not one failure. Not even a chipped tooth. Mr. Bearded Wonders, Sean Barn in the house. Hey, what are you doing the, uh, in the next couple of weeks besides staying home and relaxing? My first time I'm going to be... Uh, actually enjoying 4th of July in, at home. So when you guys open this up, come on. Look at the grease. They actually put grease in the gearbox. Put this all back, all this back together. Go figure. And I didn't bring a uh, I didn't bring any, uh, what do you call it, rags. That's your gearbox. I'm going to explain this. Uh, nice. I miss seeing you, Sean, but we're enjoying it. 56? What is 56 uh, pitch gears? Who runs 56? Hey, is that my table? Yes. Of course it is. Um, your top, your top shaft only has one gear. That means that this is gonna be, this is your, your uh, gear is going to the back of the truck. Your 6% is here. So if you want to change, because that's your front. Oh, I got confused on my whole thing. Uh, I made the live show. With, I missed everything, Tony. We were talking about you. Th oh, 32 pitch. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay. There's so many different pitch gears out there, um, uh, Jason. I, I just can't keep up. If you go in here. Go to the back here. There's a diagram. Twenty, twenty-eight, fifty-two. Twenty-eight, fifty-two. That's your no overdrive. 
If you want to overdrive it, you do 2753. So the two gears on the other side are your overdrive. As using in stock direction of your gearbox. So this is your option one. If you leave the three gears alone, you change these two gears to make it your 12% if you were on your 12%. I'm gonna say that again. It comes stock this way. This is your stock setup. If you want to overdrive your, your truck to the 12%, you wanna change the two gears on this side, not the three gears, the two gears, which give you the proper overdrive to make it 12%. If you change these over, you're all messed up. So you wanna make sure you change these two gears. Now, save for, let me see if there's any questions. Uh, <laughs> all right, if you want to swap your gearbox the other direction, you have to use an optional gear, which moves the 20 tooth upper gear farther over to the other side. It moves it to the other side. And you'll then you'll change the other gears. But uh, just remember when you run the three when you run three gears, those are all going to stay 12, uh, 20, 28 and 52. The overdrive is going to be the 2654. So when you pull this truck, pull this apart, you're going to actually, this is how you pull it apart. You're not going to change any of these three gears. You're going to change the two bottom gears, which let me pull this out. So you flip it over on this side. Man, they got all the grease in here. I'm not used to that. So when you have this, you can actually pull this one off and slide that one off. Replace this one with the 26 tooth gear and they're all, they're all marked so you can't mess it up. They're just not marked with the one gear. They, they have a gear 2753. That is your, your uh, almost 6% overdrive. So this gear has both teeth on here, so you'll never get it confused. And this one's also marked. So um, take your, your four screws out of here, replace this uh, 53 with a 54, put that back in there. Take your 27 gear off, put the 26 gear on, Get the pins lined up, and that will give you your 11. Point, uh, where's that 11.83 overdrive? Just but make sure if it's three gears, leave them alone. The two gears change over, just put that in your brain. That way, there will be no confusion. So, that way, if you're, if you're taking it apart, you got three gears in line, leave the three gears in line, change the two other ones. Very simple. Any questions on that, guys? I was trying to be as Simple as possible with this. Let's see here. Uh, hey, what's up, Dirk, Freddie, Steven? Oh, Stan, you're getting all just, you're getting all technical. <clears throat> I'll even tell you how it works. These two top gears, are on a pin they're all they're pinned together so this gear here this one gear drives this this gear here which drives this gear these gears are locked together with pins the diff or the diff the bottom gear is actually bearings there's no play it's solid but these two gears work individually off of the middle gears does that make sense guys so, to make it easy for you guys, when you pull this apart, pull this side off first, leave this all together in the bottom, pull this gear off, take this off, replace this gear with the one that's in the bag in the box, put it back on, 
Put the other gear back on here. Put it back together and you're ready to rock and roll. Then you go from 6%, well, you go from 5.7 to 11.83. That simple. If you, uh, if you do it wrong, uh, you're gonna wanna know why your truck is, your rear wheels are trying to push through everything. How's that guys, was that simple enough? Everybody, everybody, everybody understand that? I got grease all over my fingers. That just happened. I got it. Now I smell the grease. All right, cool. Everybody's uh, everybody's understanding. I just want to make this as simple as possible. I want no confusion. Now, if you get the all metal gears, then you'll just take everything out. But make sure you follow the, these instructions that are in the back of your Enduro manual, which is probably still in the box, in the bag, sealed with all the other stuff you haven't opened yet, besides truck and radio. Because that's how I roll. Um, Michael, I don't feel there's any... Uh, I don't feel there's any uh, benefit of reversing the gearbox because everybody wants the motor pointed forward for weight. So um, that's how it comes out of the box with motor forward. Um, but we did it for the simple fact is that we are all, we're all builders, we're all tinkerers. We all have our own mindset of um, how things should be done. So we make it adjustable for you guys. Um, you know, maybe you want the motor off the back. Maybe you're running a really long motor or a brush power. Or you want to put more weight in the back and then the front. So then remove, you know, it, it's, all, it's all up to you. That's what this truck's been about. We designed this truck to be adjustable, to, to you know, to, to make, make it your own truck. So you guys can do whatever you want. Uh, what's up, Ronald? Um, yeah, you can adjust for interiors, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, then once you get it all back together, you know, put that on there. No slipper, this goes right on, it locks right in. Um, this goes right there. Get your 7 mil. Tighten that up. Take your moda. Oh, let's see here. How's everybody doing today on Friday? Everybody doing good? Now, when you guys are setting, when you guys are setting the, um, uh, the pinion against the spur, uh, what I like to do, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. You can uh, put a piece of paper in, in in between it, snug it up, you know, and then you got your your proper, you know. Your, your proper uh, uh, spacing. Um, I don't do it that way, I just kind of do it by fill. Um, I think it's buttery smooth now. Uh, but you, what you want to do is you want to you know, turn it every quarter and make sure there's no tight spots, which this gearbox is really pretty, it's really true. So once you get everything Smooth, you're, you're ready to rock and roll. Then you got recap this. 
Put your dust cover back on. Screws back in here. What's up, TJ? Mark, it's 9 a.m. Saturday here. Where are you, Mark? You're not from around here. <clears throat> there you go. Now, remember what I said about the screws? Oh, what's up, Tess? My dog needs a little bit of love real quick. Hello, oh, Paul. Either her food bowl is empty or she wants to go out in the front yard. So, no? <clears throat> Once you put your gearbox back in, remember what I said. Bring everything up. Kind of hard to work and keep everything in front of you guys here. Uh, remember, guys, short screws. Where do short screws go? Short screws go on the outside. Short screws go where the thin side is. Long screws. I'm using drill. Long screws go there. And I'll tell you why. Snug those up. The reason why, because if you put the long screws where the short screws go, you're going to run the long screws right into those gears you just installed. So you want to make sure that those long screws go where the long screws go and the short screws go over here on the side. And if you, if you get to it and you don't remember, we have this thing called an Enduro Manual by Element. And you can actually open this up. It's really kind of cool. Uh, if you open this up, somewhere, it tells you what screws to put in what hole. So there's no confusion. It's, it's pretty easy peasy. And if you can't find it in here, you can either call this number right here. Um, I would call this number right here before you ask your buddies on Facebook because you'll probably get a straight answer with this one than you would on Facebook uh, or Instagram or whatever. If you call this 949 544-7500 and ask for uh, customer service, they can let you know where those screws go to. Just trying to help you guys out <clears throat> and uh, give you as, as much information as possible. Tatum, right? What's a manual? It's, this is actually in the plastic bag that's still in your box that comes with instruction manual, sticker sheet, and all that. Not everybody knows what this is. Uh, there's only, it's like a, it's a small group of guys. The Edgar, he's like the guy from Crazy Crawlers. He got like, he bought like 20 trucks. All those guys are running uh, rocking, uh, uh, rocking elements right now. He's freaking thumbs up. Every time I see him, I just want to give him a big old hug. So, um, but yeah, and then when you put, put these back in, remember, word of the day, phasing. We need to make sure that these phase together. What that means is that this pin here and this pin here lines up. Pin here, pin here, straight across. If it's sitting like this, pin here, pin here, you're, you're gonna get vibration. It's just like a real full-size um, drive shaft. Put that back in there. And 
Look at me. My phasing's wrong. Let me fix it. What's everybody doing this weekend? Are we doing anything exciting? Who's leaving for the whole week? For uh, Fourth of July. Like Archer, phasing. You know what? I haven't really watched Archer. Is that bad? Is Archer a good show to watch? It's like a grown up cartoon, I believe. Of course, the only thing I really watch on TV is um, Street Outlaws. Um, Street Outlaws. I think I, I watch Street Outlaws. I just wish the Murder Nova would do a better job. I kind of root for him. Anyways. Phasing. Kevin Hermansky. Dustin. Yeah, uh, Dustin Faultline, right? Um, they're doing a poker run in Ojai. Archer is hilarious. I must, I must, uh, must check it out then. Maybe I'll download a couple episodes next time I'm on a plane. Of course. Okay. So make sure your phasing is correct when you put all that back together. Um, let's see here. Tires. Servo, 173 ounces. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I think I've covered most of this. Um, if you guys have any questions, please start sending them my way so I can make sure they're answered. Um, let's see here. Try. I know I'm going. I'm guys. I'm going over a lot of information, and uh, this kind of should be broken up. But all you guys have the trucks. Which Jeep festival are you going to, Sean? Call me. Let me know. Uh, I have uh, the stock servo. I have run it in seven four, um, which will give you more, um, more uh, power, but no problems. But remember, it's a stock servo, so. Um, I would actually, uh, we do have a updated, upgraded servo that uh, we sell under Reedy. Um, it's our competition crawl servo. It puts out, um, you can run that at 7.4 and it's 23.2, uh, uh, whatever they call it. I'm not sure how many ounces that is. I think it's almost like 400 ounces of torque. So. Um, let's see here. Are we going to come out with a, a, a winch servo? Um, I don't think so. There are so many aftermarket companies out right now that make winch servos. Um, our whole, our whole idea with this truck is to, um, let the aftermarket companies make parts for it. We want them to support us like we support them. What's up, Bill? So uh, there's, there's lots of companies out there right now that makes wind servos. Um, I took, I actually took the stock servo, turned it into a wind servo, moved it over here, and then put a, another servo, like our heavy duty servo over here. RC2312. Uh, our, raw, our crawler servo is uh, 27116. Uh, That's the part number. 400 ounce torque spec, yeah. Mark, you never told me where you call from because you said it's Saturday. Unless I missed it. What's up, Anthony? So, um, this truck here, all my Teflon I put in it. Uh, I, I have ran uh, triple five. I've put the, right now it's got triple nine in it because I want as much power for testing as possible. Um, this, I'm not gonna put that in there right now. Um, just, just to put the truck through the paces. 
Uh, I know that's overkill, but I like to do overkill. Australia, nice. You're down under. Put another French shrimp on the bobby. Sorry, is that too much? Oh, nice. There's I didn't know these. Uh, they're racing Apple Valley. Should be a nice weekend. They're starting to warm up up here. It's gonna be it's gonna be beautiful. Um, also, uh, pricing this truck RTR with this radio. I'm gonna go over this radio too. Comes with a three channel radio. Uh, RTR out of the box is uh, three forty nine ninety nine. Plus tax wherever you are. I don't know what who does tax where or what. Um, that is for the RTR. Um, the kit is going to be two thirty nine, uh, and it comes with uh, all aluminum shocks. The blue top, middle, bottom comes with all the metal gears. Comes with the three different links, uh, steel links. Um, that truck uh, will be two thirty nine, and then a lot of people don't know that we also do. Um, Oh, born in Vegas. So you're, you were born not even two and a half hours away. I live, I'm in Victorville. So that's like two and a half hours south of, of Vegas. Nice. Very cool. What are you doing in Australia? Aren't the bugs like really big there? Um, just got side trucks. That's how easy it is. Um, what was I talking about? There you go. Um, stock radio, 130, uh, it's a, a XP 130, comes with a third channel, three position switch on the side. So if you run a servo, you have out, in, center is uh, nothing. Uh, if you run a dig, you can run your dig off of this. So you can actually do a center where it free wheels, uh, for, uh, four wheel drive, lock, and then coast. That's how, what I would probably do. Uh, up on top, you have your throttle trim, your steering trim, uh, you have your EPA uh, for your third channel here, and then you have your centering for your throttle and your uh, steering here. So you can do your endpoints on both sides of your third channel. Uh, it's, a real, it's a really nice radio. This is Jonathan's radio. Uh, it takes four uh, AA batteries, which actually lasts for a really, really, really long time. Because I leave my I leave them on all the time. What's up, AJ? What's up, Bobby? Uh, the kit will be out. The kit will be out next month. Probably the end of the next month. Yeah, the spiders in Australia gotta be huge. I just saw a video last night, and I'm like, I don't really want to go there. Hello from New York. Let's see, what time is it right now? It's, you're you're four hours away, or so. I start this at four, so it's five. It's got kind of like nine, nine thirty somewhere, something like that. I don't even know what time it is right now. Oh yeah, talking about this kit. Thank you. Before I went squirrel, <laughs> I like that. So yeah, the, the kit will be um, uh, the kit will be two thirty nine, and then a lot of people don't know. That's what I forgot to say. A lot of people don't know that we also sell a combo kit. So for you, uh, that uh, people that want to go in and buy your your wife or your kid or uh, you know your girlfriend, your boyfriend or whatever, uh, a, a car all in one. We do have a uh, a package where you get a shorty battery pack, seven point four, and you get a quick discharge, uh, quick charger. It's not a wall charger, like twenty four hour charger. It's actually a decent charger. You plug, uh, not a Dean's plug. Dean's is a brand. This is a T plug. So put your T plug into the charger, plug your balance port into the charger. Yeah, I think you can charge it at one, three, and five. Put it up to five, hit the button, it'll charge by an hour or so. It's 907. Nice. Wow, Australia has 25 million people in the whole country. California has 40 million. So what you're saying is you guys don't have traffic like we do. Yeah, some of their spiders, some of their baby spiders eat mice. Keep them. Don't bring them here. So, um, but yeah, so you can get a combo kit for 409. It comes with everything in the box. It's for four batteries. Uh, 
that's also available through your local hobby shops. So if you're looking for an all-in-one box, order that. Um, you can get all our part numbers on our website. Let's see, uh, make sure I've gotten everything. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, this is a good time to ask them. Um, let's see here. Go through my, my things here. Release, release date on the kit. It's gonna be in next month. What's up, uh, what's up Ross? What's up, Tony? Uh, the kit's going to be out uh, end of next month. Went over the radio, uh, the CS400 Speedo, went over the T-plugs, went over the trans, went over the axles, went over our optional servos, uh, went over phasing on the axles, uh, universals, um, reversing the trans, with shocks, springs, Tires are 4.65, rims are 1.9, uh, bearings are grade 3. Yeah. I went over to the, I went over this book. This is really cool. To, guys, you should really check it out. It, it's really cool. It has all your, your hardware, gives you tools needed, uh, gives you, uh, using this manual, it shows you how to build the truck. All the way through, step by step. Shocks tells you how to rebuild your shock oils. Are your shocks and your shock oil? Your shock oil and your shocks. Did you mention you can reverse? Yes. Um, Stan, yes, I did. Um, simple reason why we did that. Um, I can do it. I can tell you again. There's a lot of guys have motors with timing in them. Just by the way, all of our motors come with zero degree timing. So no matter which way you flop them, they're gonna run the same. Our rebuilding motors come with zero degrees timing, but it has marks. So you can actually play with it and adjust it for your liking. But it, they all come zero. Uh, it's just a, another way of making it better for however which way you run it. Um, say if you have a motor that does have timing, um, you can actually reverse the wires on your motor so it runs out of direction, so it's faster forward, and you can flop the ring of pinion so that the truck goes out of direction, which makes the truck faster forward than reverse. Just another way of us making the truck uh, more adjustable. Uh, yeah, uh, if you, you can test one in the Northwest. Uh, local hobby shop, they should have them in stock already. Uh, this, when is this going to be released? Our, our multi-tool? It's already released. This has been out for a long time. Uh, this one I've had, well you can tell, I've had this for years. Um, but it has a little hex drive, you put all the little bits in the back. The one thing I do is I buy the 7mm, so I have actually a, a wheel wrench in here also. You can carry the T, but I always keep it in here and put it in my backpack. It's a good little tool to have out on trail. Um, and also, like I said, guys, a lot of the aftermarket parts, uh, the optional parts, they're already available on our website. Go we'll check them out. Um, I think that's pretty much everything about the truck and the radio and the body and the wheels and tires. Um, also, I want to go over, I've talked about our batteries. I talked about our motors. Um, we also sell, uh, this is something that... I asked for um, and it's just like our we, there's the rest of it in there our our race cars we have our standard softer arms and then we have our hard arms the hard arms is a lot rigid it's rigider it's a lot stronger it's not stronger but it's a lot more rigid for for different track conditions um, so we during our testing uh, we went ahead and ran a bunch of the plastic in the hard material and we found out that the hard material slides over rocks better so you can actually go on our website and get like our sliders uh, frame rails shock towers skid plate uh, you can get a lot of these parts uh, uh, 
C hubs, knuckles, you can get all that stuff in the hard parts, which helps it slide over rocks and gets rid of a lot of, um, a lot of the flex out of the truck. Um, also with, with uh, if you do go with this, this way, you notice there's nothing here. There's nothing right here. You can actually put the, you can actually put the battery support that's in the front and move it to the back and you actually have a rear support too. Or if you're one of those guys that just wants to run a second battery, you can actually put another battery box in the back if you want. But this actually bolt, the holes are already here. All you gotta do is put it in there. It adds a little bit more support in the frame itself. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we, we came out with the hard plastic also and uh, we have noticed a difference. Um, I have tried you know, this is an RTR, so it does flex a little bit. It's just, it's good for you know everybody to bash on, and um, it's it's our standard B6 race plastic, but with the harder stuff, it gets rid of all that flex, and uh, I haven't been able to break any of it yet. And I've tried axles, pumpkin covers, pumpkin covers, diff covers, uh, C hubs, knuckles, sliders, um, shock towers. Uh, skid plate you can get all that in hard plastic if you want to uh, go that direction for you performance guys yes you will be able to uh, watch this uh, later because I'm going to save it and leave it on my um, YouTube channel as well as um, uh, I'll, I'll try to put it on YouTube also yes uh, the wheels these are method licensed trail edition wheels. Um, really cool. These are also general grabber uh, tires. They're all licensed wheels and tires. And the tires work really well. What I've noticed with the tires, um, they have really good bite. The slower you use the tire on the rock, the better it bites. Um, so if you're trying to climb something, slow down let the tire knobs do their work and that truck will walk right up uh trust me i've been playing with these tires for a long time and uh they work really good what's up what's up lee but there you go guys that's this truck in a nutshell i have pretty much gone over everything i believe is there anything that you guys want to know Yes, Tristan, I know you have them on your one-to-one. -one. I'm very jealous. I run 15-inch wheels on my Jeep, so the smallest they make these are 17s, I believe. I would love to have a set of 15s. So, any questions, guys? I think I went over pretty much this whole truck. Um, keep checking out, uh, go to Element uh, RC. Element underscore RC on Facebook. Uh, we have a UK channel. We have a, uh, a US channel uh, on Facebook, uh, Element. Um, go to our social media sites on, say, uh, Instagram, Element underscore RC. Follow me on John Schultz RC on Instagram. Follow me on uh, John Schultz on Facebook. I also have another channel called uh, uh, Schultz RC Lab. Uh, that's something that was supposed to be more RC, but I do it on, on all of them. And then you can go on to, I have a YouTube on Twitter too, but I just usually just send that from Instagram. What's up, Raz? Nice. What's the name of your YouTube channel? It's uh, John Schultz, I believe. John Schultz RC, John Schultz. I'll have to look at that. Um, I need to put more stuff on YouTube, is what I need to do. I understand. Uh, but, anyways, guys. That is, uh, I think that's going to be it. Uh, I think we knocked this out in about an hour. If you have any questions, this is the time to do it. I'm not going to drag this on any longer. Also, cool little item. I'm going to do something on my, uh, my Facebook thing. These are XP headlights and taillight kit. Super simple, super cheap, super easy installation. We also have these four lights, XP 490 LED lights. They'll plug into this truck also. At the same plug. These actually come with a little plastic insert that you can, they're round, but you can put up on square, you can't you can barely see them. 
Easy installation, two holes to screw and put a light in the front. And it's got a little insert to go in the back. Super cheap, super easy. If you guys want to run tail lights and uh, lights on it. Um, same thing with the front. These things will plug right into your Speedo. Four LED lights, run four clear ones if you have like a, a grill in the front. So if you have aftermarket bodies, those will work there. And I think I'm gonna call this video. Any questions guys, please don't hesitate, hesitate to hit me up uh, on any of my private message uh, accounts. Usually you know, Facebook Messenger is the best way. Customer service, any questions on this truck or you don't think something's correct just call customer service they'll take care of you a lot quicker than facebook will i'm just saying uh clear bodies are already available um yeah clear bodies are already available they're already in stock you can order those uh you can order those right now and we have three different grills. We have black chrome and matte chrome, I believe it is. So you can change, if you can take the stock body, you could actually change the grills and the mirrors and stuff to, a, uh, to one of our option sides. Uh, all right, guys, I think I'm gonna call this. I hope this was uh, enough information for you. I don't think I left anything out. Uh, now I need to go get a rag and wipe this truck down and put it back together and do what I was gonna do with it. I'm gonna leave you guys with my new favorite toy. That's right. Don't be haters. That's right, guys. Peace out. Hope to see you guys on trail soon. I'll be traveling a lot. I'll be going to hobby shops. <laughs>